dear student now we will complete our syllabus of physics together now we are talking about the measuring tools how you can measure the physical quantity uh, don't forget that we are talking about uh, the fundamental quantities length mass and time we can measure lens by using meter tape ruler and Werner caliper and micrometer all these are considered the measuring tools you can use it to measure the length the mass if you want to measure the mass of any object you can use Roman scale beam balance analog scale and digital scale the time if you want to measure the time you can use our glass clock stopwatch and the digital watch all these are considered the measuring tools which we can use it to measure the value of any of these physical quantities now we need to move to a very important concept in our syllabus which is called standard units what's the importance of standard units the standard units is considered our reference which help us to determine if your tool is suitable to make the measuring unit or not so the scientists need to use the standard units to calibrate these tools what is the meaning of calibration calibration means to be sure that the physical quantity is measured by a measuring tool which is really accurate in the measuring process without making this calibration we can't be sure from uh, the accuracy of our measuring process so uh, we will talk together at the beginning about the standard lens or the standard meter what is the meaning of the standard length or the standard meter the scientist made a road this road is made by platinum and iridium alloy why the scientist used exactly this alloy due to the alloy means we have here the atoms of two elements together combined together to give me one root and always the alloy has a specific or special properties which we can use it in our processes so we made the alloy this alloy from platinum and iridium we made from this alloy a rod this rod we made two engraved marks at the ends of this rod so the scientist put two engraved marks at the two ends of this road the distance between these two engraved marks considered the standard meter so if we if you if you need to define what is the meaning of a standard meter it's the distance between two engraved marks at the ends of a road made of platinum and iridium alloy kept at zero Celsius why zero Celsius exactly because if the temperature increase of course the solid expand by this process of expanding of course the distance between the two engraved marks will change so we need to keep this distance constant and we 
kept it in a, a very important bureau. It's an international bureau. It's called Weights and Measures near Paris. You may ask me why near Paris exactly. This near Paris exactly due to the first people who studied the measuring process and the measuring units and all of this stu stuff was the French people. Due to the French people were the first who used the meter as a standard unit, so we kept this tool in uh, the International Bureau of Weights and Measure near Paris. We have here, this is the old definition, we, we have a new one replaced with replaced with uh, repl this this new definition replaced the old one by this the standard meter is a specific number of wavelengths this specific number of wavelengths of a specific light red orange light which emitted in vacuum by atoms atoms of a certain element this element is krypton of course you know the atomic mass of this element, the atomic mass is 86, contained in a discharge tube. What is the meaning of discharge tube? Discharge tube means we allowed the air to get out from this tube to make it easy for the waves to get out from these atoms of the krypton. This is the definition, the new definition of standard lens. The next one is the standard mass. We are studying here the standard measuring units. The standard mass. The standard mass, by the same way, we made a tool. This tool made of a cylinder. This cylinder made of platinum and iridium alloy. This alloy what's the meaning of alloy alloy means you have here the atoms of uh, two elements platinum and iridium together by using this alloy we made a cylinder this cylinder has a specific dimensions of course i mean here by dimensions a height and radius uh, these are the dimensions of the cylinder kept at uh, zero slices by the same way to keep the dimensions constant, uh, to cancel the effect of um, uh, the, the temperature on the alloy, uh, to cancel the, uh, the effect of the temperature. And of course, we kept this tool at the same bureau, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures near Paris. This is the second standard mass. Uh, which is called the st the standard kilogram uh, and this tool is kept uh, near Paris and uh, of course we said why near Paris exactly the third one is the standard time we all know that the measuring unit of time is a second the second is the unit of uh, the time in an ancient time the, we, we we said before uh, in the ancient times we divided the day to the daytime and night time but now we can, can calculate the solar day contains how many seconds by converting the day to hours it's 24 hours 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds we have 86,400 seconds in the solar day. And this number is called the average solar day. Recently, the scientists suggested to use the atomic clocks. This uh, depending on the cesium atom. Cesium atom is a radioactive element. It's atomic mass 133. This uh, radioactive element emit a certain number of waves here you can see 
uh, the number of waves emitted from this radioactive element this atom is called atomic cesium it's very accurate its accuracy reach to 10 to power negative 11 part of a second and to imagine how uh, the high of the accuracy of this uh, clock uh, you can find that the difference between two cesium clocks work it for five thousand years it can reach to only one second only one second difference this accuracy is very very high so due to the accuracy of this tool uh, don't imagine that a clockwise uh, uh, sorry a clock uh, a cesium clock it isn't uh, a simple machine it's a very complicated big machine uh, but uh, for the otherwise it's uh, very specific it's very accurate so we can use the atomic clock the cesium clock to measure for example the period of er of earth spain which is called the day length and to check the aviation and the navigation what is the meaning of aviation and the navigation aviation means the flying Navigation means you can determine the dimension if you are moving to the north, the south, east, west. This means the navigation. And the schedule of spaceships, it should be very accurate, very specific. Uh, now, uh, we need to compare between uh, three types of instruments. We have analog instruments digital instruments and symbol instruments what is the difference between these instruments analog instruments use pointer so this is called analog by using a pointer digital means uh, using numbers symbol instrument it's a direct reading like uh, rapometer or lure or, or the lure uh, ruler you, you can find all the numbers in front of you and you can determine the value directly why this is called the symbol an instrument okay take care of a uh, uh, number of notes here uh, we have in physics something is called physical constant what is the meaning of physical constant physical constant it's a physical quantity but its value is constant doesn't it change this is the difference between physical constant and physical quantity physical quantity is a quantity but its value can be changed by changing the conditions of this process you study but physical constant is a quantity but its value is constant doesn't it change so uh, for example the light speed the speed of light equal 3 times 10 to power 8 meter per second this number doesn't change or the gravitational acceleration the acceleration of the gravity equal 9.8 meter per second squared so here uh, uh, the, this is the difference between physical constant and the physical quantity here another uh, important concept which is called numerical sense numerical sense means awareness of numbers uh, if you saw 10.5 and 10.56 of course you can say that it's a more number and using the logic expectation of the result before solving the problems how how this process can be done if I told you that the distance which is covered by a moving object increased to double at the constant time of course you can conclude that the velocity of the moving object is double the two because the relation between velocity and distance is directly so 
you can be sure here that the relation between physical quantities determine, determined by the mathematical rule okay here your behavior with physics depend on something which is called common sense common sense depending on the common sense it isn't only by using the calculator but depending on your understanding for the relation between physical quantities it's very important to understand this process okay dear student now let us move to the next part from this chapter which is called the measurement error what is the meaning of measurement er error and why this error is very important we are a scientist so we need to reach by the measurement process to uh, the measurement process accuracy to 100 percent but to reach to this number it's uh, it's very weird we can't do that we can't reach to accuracy 100 percent why because there must be an error even if a small error so we have to deal with these errors to make the accuracy grow up for example if we asked two students to measure the length of a wall in a room of course you can find difference between the value of these two students this value may be small or may be big but as the value reach to the real value this means the accuracy increase as the value moved away from the real value this means the accuracy decrease for example i have here in front of you five students to measure the length of a pencil the length of the pencil the first measured it 10.1 the second is only 10 the third 9.8 centimeter the fourth 10 and the fifth 10.2 centimeter what do you conclude through these records of course we need to reach to accuracy 100 percent but as you see here there is no accurate measuring process here we need to determine the causes of the errors maybe the reading of the device is recorded by a physicist incorrectly maybe the tool which is used in measuring the process may be unsuitable so now we are talking about reasons of uh, measurement error number one may be at the beginning the scientist fold in this uh, mistake which is uh, choosing improper tool for example using the pin balance instead of sensitive balance because the sensitive balance used in measuring the mass of a golden ring but uh, the pin balance used to measure uh, the mass of the vegetables okay if you used the proper tool maybe there is a certain defect in the measuring tool from the most famous uh, error the zero error if you want to measure the electric current intensity you need to use the ammeter the ammeter before connecting it in the electric circuit the pointer should points to the zero scale if you found the pointer points to 
the zero uh, uh, it isn't zero scale it measures one or two or 1.5 before connecting it to the electric circuit this is called zero error or you may find the pointer fall before zero this means there is zero error in this device you can't use it this is the second reason the third reason may be the person itself can't follow the correct steps in making the the experiment this mean this person will make mistakes in the procedure of the experiment so the result should be inaccurate okay uh, now let us compare between two types of errors we have something is called absolute error and another one which is called relative error what is the difference between absolute error and relative error absolute error if I told you for example measure the length of this wall and the standard value was 10 meter so 10 meter is considered the real value real value for the lens we will call it x node x circle it's x node and the student after measuring the wall he found that the length is 9.8 meter so this is the measured value the measured value we will call it x so there is difference between the actual value x node and the measured value x if you want to calculate the difference between the two values the difference between the two values this difference is called the absolute error so the absolute error equal x node minus x x node the actual value minus x which is called the measured value we will call the absolute error the change in x which is delta x here we have a very important equation delta x equal x minus x node but we need to use from mass the absolute this absolute make the value always positive why the absolute should be positive because if the lens the real lens of the wall equal 10 the student may tell you that the measure the value is 10.2 so 10 minus 10.2 the result will be 0.2 negative 0.2 the absolute error always positive so we need to put the sign of uh, absolute this absolute uh, cancel this negative but the scientists found that it's better to depend on a relative error not the absolute error why uh, relative error more accurate in giving us a real image about the error due to the absolute error only tell us about the difference between the two values the real and the measured but it doesn't give us a complete specific image about the error in the measuring process if you need to find the error accurately you need to find the ratio between the absolute error and the actual value which is called the relative error so relative error it's we, we will call it r r equal delta x over x naught delta x over x node delta x which is the absolute error and 
x node this is the real value here you can find the difference between the absolute error and the relative error the relative error more accurate than the absolute error why because the value of the relative error can put in the percentage value by comparing between the absolute error and the real value if I told you for example that uh, uh, the scientist measured the length of uh, uh, Alexandria spe uh, Beach the real value here it's uh, 100,000 meter and uh, he found it minus 500 kilos then the absolute error here will be 500 kilo it's a it's a very big number or let us say it 500 meter only it's a very big number and if I told you that uh, another one uh, measured the length of the wall and he found it less than the actual one which is 10 meter he found it uh, say it's uh, 7 meter uh, from uh, the actual which is 10 meter here's the absolute error is 3 meter if I asked you which is more accurate you can tell me the second one because the, here the absolute error equals 3 meter and in the first one uh, the science which tried to measure the length of Alexandria Beach uh, the error here equal 500 meter so 3 of course less than 500 but this is the absolute this is wrong if you need if you need to measure exactly the accuracy of this process the accuracy of this process you need to find the, ra the ratio between the absolute error and the real value so if we bought 3 over 10 you will find the accuracy 30 percent if you bought 500 500 meter over 100,000 this means 5 over 1000 this means 0 0.005 percent it's a uh, divided 100 it's 0 0.05 percent it's a very small error so the accuracy in the first example more than the accuracy in the second example so using the relative error it's very important because it's more accurate to let us know to let us know how the process is really accurate okay uh, now we reach to the end of our, our uh, lesson today uh, have a good time really thank you goodbye